We've got Mark McDonald from Lancaster University. He's already sharing his slide. As you can see, it's how I've decided to partially flip my lectures. Okay, sure. take it away, right. Mark. Thanks a lot. Um, so I'm sure most of you have are familiar with the idea of flipping, but just to make sure, uh, this is where the video content, uh, there's some videos that are produced as the main lecture content, and they're to be watched by students prior to the live sessions. And then during live sessions, um, students engage in other exercises and activities. So I think the, I've heard of this idea, of, it's been around for many years. I think one of the desires is that students think lectures are boring, um, audience participation is fun, but the problem is that lectures feel like there's this tension between doing fun things and getting through the content. And so this is a way of putting the content um, online to free up time in lectures. Okay, so uh, the literature is generally fairly positive on the outcomes, uh, sort of uh, attainment outcomes and sort of module marks and things like that. Uh, but the, the resource cost is high. Okay, and so creating the initial videos is time consuming and it means that it's a bit more cumbersome to make changes if you want to make changes to a module because you have these existing uh, videos that you need to change. So it's better, but it costs more. So is it worth the cost is the question. So this year is a change came, right? There's, uh, we had a pandemic and Lancaster's approach to this. Uh, so most lectures were delivered as pre-recorded videos. Um, that was a university decision. And so they're sort of short at most 15 minute videos, pretty much. So here's a screenshot of one of mine. I use Panopto, where you get uh, you know, a little shot of my face. There's my cat showed up in this video. There's uh, some, I used OneNote, but there's a, a range of different uh, techniques to produce these videos, uh, but we did it. And we also had live online sessions. So the live online ones where you could cover other content, students can ask questions. And I think the key lesson that we intend to carry forward from that dual delivery is uh, that we shouldn't repeat content. So students didn't like it when we repeated like the same examples and things in both the live and the recorded. And it also is just not, not a good use of their time. Okay. So here's some data. So it's always good to have a slide with some data on it. Uh, I, I've just last week finished marking the exams for this uh, module that I teach is a large second year module of 230 odd students. Uh, and here's their module marks are on the vertical axis and the minutes viewed is on the horizontal axis. Um, no real relationship, right? So there's a blue line on the left there is, uh, indicates the total length of time uh, of minutes that I gave them to watch. And there's a satisfying cluster right around that line suggesting most students basically just watched each video once and that was it. So Panopto actually really helpfully uh, records all of the information unless you download a massive spreadsheet with like all of the video views, how long they took to watch it. So if a student watches a full video, it, even if it, they watched it at twice the speed or even if they pause it, it would just give you the length of that video and record that as a minute. So this represents, you know, it, it doesn't count the, the pauses and stuff. So you don't really know what they're doing during the video. And clearly some of the students are absorbing material and, and some are not. Um, so there you go. I mean, I think that the takeaway for me with this data, and I think the literature is similarly kind of um, hard to draw conclusions from this metric. It, it's that you can't really tell what students are doing. Are, are they being an effective uh, independent learner? You can't really tell by, by these sorts of metrics. So, and if I were a student, I probably wouldn't bother with the videos either because the notes are enough. Right, so my plan um, going forward is to keep the videos. So I think one thing I do know from the videos uh, this year is that they worked really well. Uh, the student satisfaction was as high as that I've, I've ever had in a module. So they really liked the way it went and I'd like to capture some of them. So um, I'm gonna reuse the same videos and change my lecture, uh, the activity to be more like uh, student exercises and group activities, not 100%. So this is what I mean by partially flipped. So it'll still be me giving some examples, uh, discussing say assessments. That's something I did that worked really well, I think this year, sort of giving examples of student work on the screen and saying, hey, here's what somebody did, it's really great. And talking about the importance of assessments and stuff like that. Um, that worked well, but sort of unloading the main lecture content into the videos. So that's 
my plan. And then I sort of put at the bottom there a review, a lit, uh, systematic review of the research literature and mathematics uh, education about uh, videos and stuff. That's really interesting read. And the, one of the reasons why I put it there is one of their, uh, they uh, make recommendations about improving the usefulness of lectures. And that's essentially more interactive activities and consider flipping so that the video content is uh, expected to be viewed prior to the live sessions. Okay, so the final comment I want to make is that I am, so I've been talking about my personal plans. I'm also the director of teaching in the department in Lancaster. And so I'm responsible for leading and coordinating changes uh, across the, our programs. And our plans for next year are coming more into focus. And I don't mind telling you that about a third of our lectures are planning on basically doing this. So flipping, using the videos from, from this year as part of their teaching for next year. And uh, I mean, Lancaster as a whole is uh, being maybe a bit more ambitious than some universities. I've put a picture of the one of our the lecture theater I hope to be in. We're planning for no social distancing at the moment. So, well, we'll see <laughs> when the term starts, whether that's wise or not, but that's the plan. So summary is uh, we've already done the heavy lifting of uh, creating the videos, which is the hard part of, of flipping. And many of us are gonna try to use that next year, even when we return to in person. So that is um, all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. That was a uh, very interesting. It's uh, uh, it, it's an interesting question to, to find out how many places are going to try and reuse their videos. Because I mean, everybody feels as though well, they've they've kind of sunk a lot of effort into them. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, it's about a third. I think most lecturers are just they want to get back to normal. They want to get back to normal lectures. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're doing a couple of uh, short, short talks here. So we'll have uh, questions afterwards.